9-11 were not so stupid as to take such a risk for no reason. What could possibly have been the reason? Well, before we examine the possibilities, let's see if we can find more examples of this bizarre, seemingly deliberate self-incrimination. Some people in Washington do as they please. They drive hummers and caddies and SUVs. Pay for it by budgets to build levees. Well, who could have seen it coming? And it was who? Patient Tuesday morning in readiness for the arrival of a very special guest. President George W. Bush Jr. was expected to premiere his national reading initiative at the local five-star school. Emma E. Booker Elementary became a part of history for a very different reason. Before the program could begin, at 8.42 a.m., the South Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City was struck by a commercial airliner hijacked from Boston's Logan International Airport. Approximately 18 minutes later, a second domestic jet airliner took dead aim at the North Tower of the World Trade Center and disintegrated on impact. The unfolding crisis would overshadow any celebration of reading achievement and forever change the happy face of that day. I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building. There was a TV set on, and, and uh, Good morning. Hi. Good morning. How are you? I'd also like you to meet the Secretary of Education oh, well, and right. the Lieutenant Governor of Florida. We met, didn't we? Good to meet you. Hi. And this is Daniel. Great to meet everybody. Eric? Yeah, uh, what are you doing? Eric? Eric? I know. Good to meet you all. That's good. You okay? Thank you. Thank you. Good to meet you all. We're excited for being here. I want to thank Ms. Daniels for being the teacher. She's my friend and the principal. I want to thank you all for practicing with me. Thank you so much. Here's the drill report. 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 Here's the drill Get ready to read all the words on this page without making a mistake. Read this word the fast way. Get ready. Mad. Yes, mad. Get ready. Can. Yes, cap. Get ready. Can. Yes, can. Get ready. Can. Yes, can. Get ready to read these words the fast way. Get ready. Can. Yes, can. Boys and girls, you're going to read these words again. Remember what you say when there's an E at the end of the word. Get ready. Neither Bush nor his handlers seem concerned that a World Trade Center has been hit by an airplane. How could the Secret Service have assumed that the unelected president was safe in the middle of a surprise attack? The Secret Service's only job was to keep the unelected president safe. Yet they do nothing, even after Bush is told that a second plane has hit the other tower. White House Chief of Staff Andrew Card will now whisper into Bush's ear. Reportedly, he said, a second plane has hit the second tower. America is under attack. Open your book up to lesson 16. Lesson 16, page 153. <laughs> difficult moment for America. I um, unfortunately will be going back to Washington after my remarks. 
Secretary Rod Pace and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. The negligence of Bush's Secret Service handlers provides strong evidence that 9-11 was an inside job. There is no explaining it as anything but complicity. This complicity did not go unnoticed. But what did go unnoticed was that this behavior was out of character not only for a Secret Service that didn't have prior knowledge, but also for one that did have prior knowledge. Why were they so incriminatingly negligent? Why didn't they act naturally and evacuate Bush immediately to safety, as though they knew nothing about the attacks? When Bush's Secret Service handlers are insiders to the biggest and most daring act of treason in the history of the world, would you expect them to act completely out of the ordinary, shouting their complicity at a taped PR event? Or would you expect them to do what they are trained to do? evacuate the unelected president and not create an anomaly to be studied? Who wouldn't plan how they would act at the time of the crime, that historic crime? How could they possibly have botched that up? This is another example of that bizarre, seemingly deliberate self-incrimination. And that wasn't all Bush and his team did to incriminate themselves. On two separate occasions, Bush told an impossible lie that he saw the first plane attack on television before entering the classroom. We walked in the classroom. Uh, I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building. There was a TV set on. And, and uh... I had, was sitting outside uh, the, the, the classroom waiting to go in, and I saw an airplane hit the tower. Of a, of a t you know, the TV was obviously on, and I, I used to fly myself, and I said, well, there's one terrible pilot. And uh, it said it must have been a horrible accident. But no television outlets had any footage of the first plane attack until later that afternoon. Only one camera caught that on film, and the networks didn't get it until later. And no, there isn't a special presidential secret broadcast network that caught the first plane crash on film. If there was, that would be even more incriminating, given how long it took for the FAA and the Pentagon to figure out what was going on. This is incredible. Bush lied about how he first learned of the September 11 attacks. Bush not only lied about how he learned of the first plane crash, it seems he may have also lied about how he learned of the second plane attack, too. He said in multiple interviews, and the 9-11 Commission reported that when Bush's Chief of Staff Andrew Card whispered into his ear in the Booker classroom, he said, A second plane has hit the second tower. America is under attack. But as you can see from this audio overlay, Card must have been whispering incredibly fast. A second plane has hit the second tower. The nation is under attack. Plane is at the second tower. America's under attack. The second plane is at the second tower. The nation is under attack. Imagine that. Bush lied about how he found out about the first plane crash and probably the second. That's incredibly suspicious, isn't it? Bush actually began lying about 9/11 the evening after the attack, when he told the nation 